Karen Stack from Lick the Bowl. Welcome to Cake TV, brought to you by Renshaw. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to create this design using vertical and horizontal stripes. I can't wait to show you my perfect techniques to make it so easy for you every time. So the first step is to put some fondant on top of my dummy cake. What I need to do is paint a little bit of piping gel just on top of the cake. So I'm going to need a little bit of the white Renshaw fondant. And I don't need too much. I only need enough to cover the top of my cake. I'll add a tiny bit of corn flour onto the bench. And I keep moving my fondant around on the bench so that it's not sticking. So I've rolled out my fondant so it's nice and smooth. I'm just going to use my cake smoother just to smooth it out and get rid of any air bubbles if there's any there. My next step is to simply just pick up the fondant and pop it straight on top of the cake. I'm going to give it a smooth with the cake smoother. So the next step is to remove the excess fondant from around the edge of the cake. I'm going to take an acrylic lid and with the acetate sheet on the other side, I'm going to cup it around the side of the cake. And in a motion, I'm going to come around here, I'm going to slowly cut off the side of the fondant. Now I'm just going to gently remove that lid. Now with my smoother, I'm gently just going to smooth it down. What I don't want to do is push it too much because I've removed the excess and everything's in a beautiful straight line. So I'm really just putting it on and just giving it a little bit of a tap. If there's any rough edges, you can pop this back on top, grab your acetate sheet again, and really carefully come around and just neaten up the sides. So now we have a piece of fondant on our cake that is in direct line with the cake itself. So we've covered the top of the cake and I've left it for quite a few hours to dry. When we're attaching the stripes to the side of the cake, I like the top of the cake to be dry. If it's not dry, it's really easy to damage that nice smooth surface that you've just created. So my next step is to take some of the Renshaw white fondant and also some of the black fondant. I'm going to be putting it through the pasta roller attachment on the Kenwood. And what this is going to do is create a really nice even piece of fondant for me to cut out my stripes so that they're all the same thickness all the way around. So I'm going to roll out my fondant just a little bit so that I can get it ready for popping through the pasta roller. When I'm rolling out the piece of fondant, I'm also wanting to keep it in a rectangular shape so that it's easy for me to feed straight through. So now we've rolled out some black fondant and some white fondant. I've used number one setting on this pasta roller attachment. So both my fondant pieces are rolled out to the same consistency. So when I'm lining my stripes up on the side of my cake, they're all going to be flush with each other. I'm going to leave my fondant sitting on the bench maybe for five or 10 minutes, just so that it firms up a little bit. If your fondant is too fresh, the stripes won't hold themselves. So if you just leave the fondant sitting on the bench for a little while just to firm up a little bit, the stripes when you pick them up to adhere them to the side of your cake will stay in shape much better. Now I'm going to cut out my fondant stripes using this mat as a guide so that I can cut my stripes evenly every time. I'm going to use a metal ruler and a sharp scalpel blade to ensure that each one is perfectly cut. Using the lines on this mat, I'm going to use them as a guide to cut each stripe out so that they're one inch thick. You'll notice that when I've cut my stripes, I haven't cut right to the end of each end of fondant. I find that this helps keep the fondant in place and it doesn't move all over the place so you can cut each line at the same time instead of having to line up your fondant each time and then make a new cut on the other side. So now I've carefully cut out my stripes. I'm going to cut the excess fondant off at the bottom. I'll just use a sharp knife to just cut that straight down. So there you have it, some carefully cut out stripes that we can start to adhere to the side of the cake. The fondant has been sitting out now for a little while, so they're a lot easier to handle. We can pick them up and attach them to the side of the cake and they won't move around too much. I've got my dummy cake that we prepared earlier and the fondant that's on top of the cake is nice and firm. 
and you'll see why that's important in a moment when we're cutting the excess off the stripes. Just a rule to remember when you're doing stripes is the first stripe that you put onto your cake is the most important one because if that's not straight, the rest of your stripes won't be straight either. I'm going to take a little bit of piping gel and I'm just going to paint it on the side of the cake. I'm going to attach one stripe at a time. So I'm only going to put piping gel in one line in readiness for one stripe. So I'm not going to paint the whole side of the cake. And I'm also going to use a cake smoother that I can hold up to the side of the cake to make sure that my stripe will be straight and in line with the side of the smoother. Now that my stripe is on straight, I'm going to cut the excess off the top using a sharp blade or a knife. Now I'm ready for my next stripe. So I'm going to apply a little bit more piping gel. So I've continued to add these stripes around the cake and I'm closing up towards the gap at the back. You'll see that the gap is still nice and even and because I've made sure that my stripes are straight each time before I put my new one down, I've got the same gap in between here. As I'm getting towards the gap, what I'm going to do is just quickly double check to make sure that I don't need to adjust my stripes. So what I'm going to do when I get to this stage is just choose some of my off cuts and I'm just going to put them along the bottom just to see how I'm going with my stripes. If I need to change the width of any of the stripes, it's a good time to do it now so that it, it's not so obvious that you've got some thicker ones and some, some smaller ones. And I can see there I've got a tiny little bit of a gap that's different. So what I'm gonna do with one of my last stripes, the white one, is I'm just gonna roll it out a little bit wider. So that was my final stripe and as you can see, it's fit in perfectly. I'm Karen Stack from Lick the Bowl. Thanks for joining me on Cake TV, brought to you by Renshaw. I just need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Through the pasta roller. <laughs> I'm Garrett Stack.